Hey everybody, this is Mark for the Gun Guy channel, and today we are going to be talking about one of the guns that is probably uh, the most fun I've had shooting in a really long time, and that is the Henry Classic Lever Action H001. Now, this lever action gun might make you look a little bit like Chuck Connors in The Rifleman, but uh, probably not going to feel like him because it's shooting 22 long rifle. But what it might make you feel like is Ralphie from A Christmas Story. You know, you forget it. Well, you saved us. But that's okay because Ralphie really knew what it was like to have fun shooting a rifle. And he also knew if you're careful, you're not going to put your eye out. <laughs> so, right after this, we're going to take a look at the Henry H001. So for me, there are very few things in life as fun as a lever action rifle. Lots of people like their semi-autos, their full autos, their revolvers. But for me, a, a lever action rifle, there's, there's just something about the nostalgia of these guns. Um, you know, these are what you call cowboy guns. And it's reminiscent to the old westerns that I used to watch as a kid. So I really do get a kick out of shooting them. And honestly, cowboy guns are what got me involved in shooting in the first place. So what is a lever action rifle? Well, a lever action refers to a type of action for a repeating firearm that uses a manually operated cocking handle, uh, usually located around the trigger guard, and it usually pivots forward. And when it pivots forward, this moves the bolt. And in turn, the bolt feeds and extracts cartridges in and out of the chamber. It also, at the same time, cocks the firing pin mechanism. Now, this is in contrast to other type of repeating actions. There is bolt actions, pump actions, semi-automatic, full automatic, and even uh, burst mode actions. So a firearm that uses this kind of lever or a handle, right, and moves backwards and forwards, is uh, colloquially referred to as a lever gun. Cesar Rizzaglio, an Italian inventor in 1829, came up with one of the first of these. In the US, uh, the first lever actions were most likely Colt's first and second ring lever rifles, which were also a revolver type of rifle. Now, these were produced between 1837 and 1841. There was a ring located in front of the trigger, and when pulled, it would cycle the cylinder to the next loaded chamber. At the time, this was a ball and cap rifle. Ball and cap refers to a, a percussion cap and, and basically a muzzle loader, which had replaced the flint locks. And then these would actually give way to the breech loading uh, cartridges, which are far more uh, like what we're used to today. Some of the best improvements took place in 1860 by Benjamin Tyler Henry and Christopher Spencer. Spencer had worked for Colt, and that's basically where he learned his arms making. The Spencer was a lever-operated rifle with a removable seven-round tube magazine. In uh, August 18th of 1863, Spencer walked into the White House and met with President Lincoln. They had discussed using this rifle in the Civil War, and uh, Lincoln and his Secretary of War went out on the White House field, or right near the Washington Monument, and they actually uh, started doing some target shooting. And as a result of the target shooting and Lincoln liking the gun, uh, the Union would order just over 13,000 of the Spencer repeating rifles and 58 million rounds of ammo for it. So wartime production of this gun would reach 100,000. Spencer repeating rifles uh, would unfortunately declare bankruptcy in 1868 and would later be acquired by Winchester for $200,000 in 1869. Henry rifles were also used by the Union Army, and they were originally chambered in 44 caliber rimfire. That's right, there was actually a 44 caliber rimfire cartridge. These designs would be used and improved by uh, John Marlin, uh, Winchester, and Savage Arms, and by the 1890s, the lever action rifle had really evolved into a form that uh, would last for well over a century. 
Now, I know we skipped a bunch of models, the, the Yellow Boy 66, the Winchester 92, which, which is a personal favorite. That's what I actually shoot when I compete in cowboy action. The Winchester 94 and a whole bunch of other iterations on the theme. The problem is if we just talked about a detailed history of the lever action, we'd be here all day and you'd be really bored. You're a bit late for that! So instead of doing that, we're gonna move on to the unboxing of this rifle and then we're also gonna take a look at some range time with it and how it shot. If you're enjoying our videos, if, you, if you're liking them, if you wanna know when we're going to be putting them out, cause we're doing it pretty regularly, please like and subscribe. That way if you subscribe, uh, you'll be some of the first to know when we put out the new content. So right now, let's take a look at what we got in the box. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, now, yes, this gun has been out of the box before, so it's not a true unboxing. I apologize for uh, fraudulently misleading everyone. Um, anyhow, the rifle comes in this beautiful plastic slip, and this, this is kind of neat. Uh, they have the inspection notes from the gun, so an inspection tag. Uh, the Henry, made in America or not made at all. A warning. Uh, to inspect the gun for ammunition, so don't pull the trigger until you inspect it. And it does make a valid point. You can't just check the chamber once. Because it is a tube-fed uh, gun, you want to check it several times. You get the manual, and the part that we've all been waiting for, you get the gun. So let's take this out of the box. So this is the Henry Classic Lever Action. It shoots 22 long rifle, 22 long, and 22 short. The model is H001, and again, it's a lever type action. So we will check in a cord, and the gun is empty, and we'll do it again, and the gun is empty, and we'll do it again. Some of you have seen me shoot a uh, 22 long rifle and have complained that I, I didn't check the manual or you should never shoot it. Um, certain guns you are allowed to shoot 22 long rifle without a, a snap cap or a dummy round in the chamber. This is not one of those guns. So what we're gonna do is put our thumb on the hammer, depress the trigger, and let it go down softly. Uh, we've also got some snap caps that we'll use when we're uh, going to test uh, the trigger pulls on this gun. It does shoot all three of those uh, 22 caliber rounds. In regard to capacity, uh, for the shorts, there's 21. For the longs, there are 17. And for the long rifle, 15. Although, I'll be honest, when we went out to the range with this gun, uh, the tube did not like 15. Um, so we had to take a couple out to make it work. I'm assuming that's just because the spring hasn't been worked and the gun was brand new. The manufacturer's retail price suggestion on this gun is $425, but if you shop around a bit online, you'll be able to find it for around $300. The barrel on this gun is 18.5 inches, and it is a really pretty uh, blue steel. You can, you can see that. Uh, it's marked here, Henry re Repeating Arms, uh, and made in the USA. I believe that is Bayonne, New Jersey. So the barrel itself is blue. This is really pretty. Uh, the receiver is not, however. So this is actually what they call, I believe, Zamic, and that is some kind of alloy of zinc, aluminum, and magnesium. So the receiver part is not blued, but the, the barrel itself is. It has what they call semi-buckhorn rear sights, which are really nice. Um, and the front sight has a, a shroud on it. Um, the shroud is metal, but the front sight is plastic. Now, for some people, uh, they were complaining about that. Honestly, the, the sight worked just fine for me. Uh, however, after a day of shooting, the, the cover did move forward, so I ha had to reset it. The overall length on this gun is 36 and a half inches, and it weighs in at about five pounds, or five and a quarter pounds. The twist on the barrel is 1 16th, and uh, both the front and the rear sights are fully adjustable. 
Now, if you'd like, you, you can also put a scope on it. This is a 3 8 grooved area on the receiver, which would accept a 22 uh, rim fire scope. So Henry actually sells these, I believe, on their website too. The wood on this is just really pretty, particularly for the price. Uh, this is solid walnut, uh, both front and back on this gun. Now the butt of this gun has plastic and I can't see if it's upside down or not, but in theory, I think that says Henry. It does say Henry, I cheated, I peeked. There is no manual safety on this particular lever action. Although the safety for this is what they call a quarter cock. So we're gonna go ahead and, and show you what, you what to do on a quarter cock. You can do it two ways. Now this is a rim fire, so it's a little bit different uh, than a center fire. So I don't believe that it matters whether you, you do it manually or after you have levered it out. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. For a center fire, on certain center fire lever actions, if you just release it back down, um, I believe it still puts the uh, firing pin on the cartridge. So you want, don't want to do that. But in regard to this, you can simply take it and you'll hear the audible click. It's now at quarter cock and this is safe and it's drop safe at this point. The way that you can tell is if you look at this notch, you'll see that it's shorter when it's in quarter cock. And we're gonna release this fully. And you can see there's a greater space when the hammer is all the way down. So again, we'll just do this once. You're now in a quarter cock. The other way to do this is if the hammer is back completely, if you just depress it and you're holding the trigger, the hammer comes all the way forward. However, if the hammer is all the way back, you press the trigger, you release the hammer somewhat, take your finger off the trigger. Oops, but you have to let it go forward at least. So you hammer back, let it come forward, finger off the trigger. It will now not go fully forward and it goes into quarter cock. And if the way you wanna check that, again, for a visual, she can go back here and see that the, the hollow notch is not as long as it would be if the hammer is fully forward. So anyhow, that is how you operate the quarter cock safety on this particular gun. And we're just gonna release it back into a, into a hammer down. The way that this particular lever action uh, gets fed is not through a side gate. And one of the reasons is it, it's just probably not practical to use these, these tiny little 22s and feed it through the side like you would on a bigger uh, caliber. So one of, speaking of which, one of the advantages of lever gun, particularly if you're interested in shooting cowboy action, is most people will have a pistol caliber cartridged lever action that matches the pistols that they are carrying. That way, if you're shooting, uh, you don't have to carry multiple caliber uh, bullets. So if you have 357 pistols, you would most likely get a 357 lever action because that way you can use the same ammunition and it fits on the belt much easier. For this particular gun, the way that we would uh, load it is with this tube. And this is actually really nice. Uh, for those of us who have used a, a loading gate, uh, sometimes your fingers get chew chewed up, so you have to smooth it out. This, this one is very easy. You just twist it, and you can pull the brass tube out. And this is brass. We'll, we'll clean this later. And then the bullets will go in here. Oop, we got some gunpowder on us. But what we'll do is we'll just... Take some of our snap caps out so that we don't accidentally let the, uh, let the hammer down again. This does not have to be out to load it, but 
you could put this in here so you can just angle it and let it slide down. The other way that you can do this, and we'll move this forward. There we go. So the other way that you can do this, oop, uh, let's see. All right, so there was, there was one down there that didn't want to come out. But now we can do that because we have a snap gap in there, which is now somewhere on the floor that we'll look for. So we'll put the two back in. All right. There we go. And it would lock in with this knob right here. But if you also wanted to, you didn't have to remove the rod the entire way. You can simply put the bullets in that way. A uh, flat side goes towards the trigger. Uh, the business side goes towards the business side of the rifle. It's an easy way to remember it, and if you forget, they kind of gave you a cheater pattern. So we'll put that in just to show you. We put these down, the magazine tube goes in and clicks into place. And now we'll try and operate the action for you. Um, so we'll depress it. If you can see, there is one in the carrier right there. When you do it, it should now be in the chamber. Pop. It's going to extract and go flying like that. There's another one back. Pop. And... I believe we only did three, so we're going to go boom. Yep, and now it's empty. Um, so that is how you would load this particular gun. All right, so um, let's take a look at the trigger. Now, I did shoot this, and uh, and you can see it's it's a really accurate gun. What we'll do is we'll, we'll show you some of the, um, the target footage at 25, and then we'll also show you some of the plinking footage, which... Uh, I was not so accurate at, but, but I was happy with, uh, considering we were just shooting with iron sights. But the trigger on this gun is really, really nice. So what we're going to do to test the trigger um, is we're going to put one snap cap in here. So we're going to close that up, open this up again, slide this in, and... Uh, We'll chamber that. That so now that we have a uh, snap cap in here, uh, it's safe to to shoot, dry fire this gun. So what we'll do is we are going to check. Two pounds, eight point three ounces, and we'll clear that. Try it again. One pound, 12.5 ounces. Clear it. And one pound, 10.7 ounces. So I guess the moral of this story is the trigger on, uh, on this uh, Henry is really light, which you would expect it to be, right? It's a 22, and it, there is zero recoil on this gun. In fact, when we were shooting it, um, because there were other guns going off around us, at times I, I wasn't even sure if the gun had fired or if I was empty, so we had to check. Uh, but great, great shooting gun. So we're going to take, put that away. Um, we'll go over the trigger just to see. So if you want to see um, if there's any creep or not, we're going to do this. And it's, it's a pretty crisp, clean trigger. I don't think there's much creep at all. Try that one more time for you. Yeah. One more, just in case. I'm going to go as slow as I can, see if I can move it without 
pulling the trigger. Nope. So again, uh, really nice, clean, clean break. Love this gun. Had a ton of fun with this gun. Um, and outside of fun, I guess you, you could use this for, uh, you know, some small game hunting if you really wanted, or it's a great, great, great gun to teach someone new, uh, to the sport of hunting, how to shoot. Um, no recoil, that way they're not concerned about it. it it's not loud at all. Um, again, that would be, be some of the purposes that I would use this gun for outside of just having a blast with it. So right now, uh, we tested the trigger. Um, oh, let's do the action real quick too. So the action on this is just really buttery smooth. Like um, I have some more expensive lever action guns um, that honestly they have nice actions on them too, but I had to have them slicked up right out of the box. Uh, just nice. a little bit to the right. Clink. We will go ahead now, take this gun. We're going to do a quick field strip. We're not going to take it down the whole way, but we're just going to do a quick cleaning because we ran about 200 rounds of ammunition through it. Give you an idea of how dirty the gun gets uh, with 200 rounds that went through it. Um, you know, 22 is kind of notorious for being a dirty round. So let's open her up and see what we got inside. All right, so let, let's get started. Um, first thing we have to do is remove the receiver cover. And uh, if you're gonna be working on guns, I, I honestly suggest uh, investing in some gunsmithing screwdrivers. Uh, you, you don't wanna strip these screws. Uh, I really like this particular kit got it off Amazon uh, it, we're not selling it and uh, but I'm happy with it so uh, it's a Wheeler kit uh, you start by removing the receiver screws and you'll see that there is a washer underneath on all I believe on all four of these so we're gonna put that there and again, these aren't tied or uh, these aren't done super tight. When you, when you put them back, you, you don't want to over tighten them. You don't want them loose, but you, you don't need to muscle them in. You, you don't want to risk doing that. And we're just going to take these and flip these out. There you go. So you want to save those as well, right? And those will help hold the screws in place. Oop. And say so we will go in there and do that. Flip to the other side and do the exact same thing. Is 
there. And boom. There we go. Now, this is still not going to come out. And the reason it's not is because it's attached to the stock. So to clean this gun properly, you have to take this off as well. And I guess you could start here if, if you really liked. There is only the top screw on this. It goes all the way through and comes out relatively easily. You want to make sure that you keep all your screws um, somewhere where you can find them. And we will take that, slides off, and, and you just really have to love the, the quality of wood that Henry gives you on this. This is a beautiful, uh, beautiful piece of wood. All right, so now we should be able to take this cover off. Let's see, I'm gonna jimmy this a little bit. And there we go. Now, honestly not that horribly dirty in here, right? Little bit of grit, little bit there, not bad. The bolt is right here, comes out. And that's, that's really about as far as you have to take this part down to do the cleaning. Uh, for rifles, because of the rifling, you want to clean with, from the breech uh, to the end of the barrel. Uh, now that doesn't necessarily mean you have to push everything. You can also pull and uh, we'll do that in a second. And what we're also going to do is we're going to get this tube out of here. Because that was pretty dirty, we'll clean that as well. All right, so we will take our cleaning rod, which is pretty long. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to show you, uh, eh, no, we'll do it two ways. We're, we're, we're going to start with, with putting the, uh, the cleaning rod in the barrel. I don't particularly like this. I find it more difficult than helpful, but I do know some people who do it like this. And then what you can do is twist this thing. Let me do this. If you hold this, you can twist it Oop. off, right? Oh, no, it looks like we're doing doing stuff in the center. So we're not going to do that that way. We're going to come here and take this back. All right. So that we can do this. We're going to come out here. Do this. And again, this, this is kind of why I say this is not my, my preferred method, but, but I do know some people who do it. I, uh, I prefer putting it in the breech end and jamming it down. But again, d different ways. Just gives you, gives you a couple of options if you'd like. Now the patches, because it's a 22, are smaller than what you, you've seen us using before. And that, that's because the barrel is smaller. So. You need a smaller patch so it doesn't get jammed up. I'm going to put this in. And again, this, you know, with a 22, it, it's kind of dirty, so you, you don't want to be cheap with the, the solvent. We'll put this back here. Screw it in. We, we will not be doing this twice, by the way. But there you go. And so now, depending on what your hand strength is, you simply have to pull it through. And honestly, not, not that dirty. 
Uh, so some people like doing that. I quite frankly just prefer taking it, putting it here, and pushing through. And as opposed to unscrewing it, what I will do is remove it and carefully take it back out again. Put a clean patch in. Make sure it's tight. Whoops. We're just going to push this through one more time. And it is much harder to do this way, by the way. So that's the reason that some people like doing it the other way. All right, we're going to take that out. We're going to let that sit for a little bit. While that is sitting, and take our patch, just clean this area up a little. So get where the feeder ramp is. And uh, we're good there. I also like to take one of the Q-tips and we can go in here. Let's see if we got anything there. It will go in there. Honestly, not, not bad at all. So we'll leave this here for a second. Take a look in here. And honestly, this, this is not dirty either. But we could do a quick wipe down if we want. See if there's any dirt that got into here. Gunpowder residue. But looks pretty clean. Also take the bolt. Now, there's the extractor. All right. Take a look. There's the device for the rim fire. And this, this is definitely a little bit dirtier. That's okay. Just wipe this down. Give it a quick brush as well. But all in all, um, honestly, not, not nearly as dirty as I would have thought. Um, the other thing that we can do, pick up some of this, um, and we can go over the outside the barrel and the and we want to take get a, this patch which was not dirty at all and let's clean this the, the tube feeding magazine now this is brass so you want to be careful uh, that you don't bend it So that's, that's better. And just because there's some gas, and I, I don't know if anyone else does this, by the way, but I do. I'm just going to take one more clean patch and use my rod again. And I'm going to go down the magazine tube on the gun and you know what I'm going to do it dry first just to, to give you guys an idea of how clean or dirty this is so we're going to take this and just go down 
thing come out and you can see that, that that's pretty dirty so I'm gonna take just one patch put it in and again I, I don't know if uh, cleaning the magazine tube is recommended or not I just I just do that myself so if you're if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. All right, we're gonna get that in. Take that out, and that was well, that was dirtier than the barrel. So I'm kind of glad we did that. Now I'm gonna take a dry patch, and this is this is bigger. Right, so we can use a bigger, bigger patch. And once again, just feed it, spin it, take it out, and we could keep doing that if we wanted, um, but for right now, at least at least we got a, a good chunk of the gook out of there, okay? Now, there are two ways to go about brushing the boar. Uh, one is a boar snake, which uh, lots of people like. I, I actually like it. Um, the other is a brush, which you would simply put at the end of your rod, remove the patch holder and go through. What, what I'm going to do for time's sake, again, you just go through once, unscrew it at this end, and, uh, and then be done with it. But I'm going to use the boar snake. So we, we've had solvent in there. You take it, you, whoops, let gravity do its job, right? Yeah. Hopefully let gravity do its job. Are we coming out yet? Nope. Keep feeding it. All right, there we go. And it comes out the other end. Then what you do, just give it a good tug. And you're only supposed to have to go through it once. And that cleans it. And honestly, I, I don't know if you can see down, down the barrel or not, but it, it, it did look pretty pristine with, it, with the rifling right now. So that's one of the reasons I like my boar snakes, because I'm lazy. So they say necessity is the mother of invention. I say laziness is. So that worked, and what we'll do, let's just run a patch through to see how it did. All right, there we go, got, got our patch. Again, we're gonna go with, from the breech to the end of the barrel. And it looks pretty darn good. So, barrel is clean. Now, feeder ramp does have a little bit of dirt. So, what we're going to do just go back and do a little more of this. Just right here. Try and get that. 
area good and clean. So go in with that. And we're going to take our pink brush in honor of Mother's Day. We're doing this on Mother's Day. Make sure you, you wish your mother's happy birthday and be grateful they are, are still around. Not happy birthday, happy Mother's Day. Uh, all, right. all right, that's, that's good enough. We're going to clean up a little bit of our mess. And let's go about putting this back together, which, which can sometimes, honestly, be kind of a challenge. So, uh, so hoping it doesn't take me too long to do. Um, in regard to oil, uh, because the 22 is, is kind of a dirty round, we don't want to don't want to do too much, but the action right there, right? Could put one drop. Oop. Just one drop and and work it a bit, right? And honestly. Just those two little drops really, really did make it more. Now, you can also put a little drop right there in the hammer. Not sure if that went, so we're going to do one a little more. Oop. Okay. And we could work that as well. Okay, so those are really the only parts internally that I would do. We can also do the sides. You can see where there's a little bit of wear, but rather than just dump a whole ton of oil on this, we're going to use our tooth, or not our toothpick, our Q-tip. Right. And give it a loving, gentle coat. There we go. Yeah, looks like we got a little wear there. And we got a little wear on the bottom here. So we're going to go ahead and do that too. All right. We are going to slide this back in, and this is where it gets tricky, by the way. So bear with me if this takes a while. I think the hammer needs to be back. So the hammer's back. The lever is at 90 degrees. Comes in over that. And there we go. Voila. All right, so that was kind of deceivingly tough. So I'm gonna, against my better judgment, try that one more time. So we've got this. And the way that you do this is the hammer is back. You have to go in, whoops, keep this back. Take the hammer through the opening, right? Get those to line up and then slide it forward. So after much fiddling, that's how it works. Um, we're going to put this back on.
Again, we're not going to over tighten it, but we are for sure going to give it a good twist. There we go. And there's a bit of resistance on these screws as you're putting them in. Again, just hand tighten, nothing too too strong. Don't don't Sammy Sosa it. This last one in. Again, just hand tighten. Um, we will put the stock back on. Now, I do this all the time, so I'm, I'm just going to pre-warn everyone. I always put, want to put this on backwards, and you won't be able to. Um, I have no idea why. It just looks like it to me. It's the same reason I keep calling the guide rod the guide rail. So it should just slip in real nice and easy. Put that screw in. We'll hand tighten that. Last bit we will put back together is the magazine tube. I am going to take one drop of oil. Let's make it two. And I'm just going to go over this as well as the stop so that the coil inside again you know they got that got dirtier than the barrel so I'm glad we at least did a, a slight cleaning on it just to go back in and is locked into place now a couple of side notes uh, we're gonna oil this barrel you can see it's got fingerprints on it my understanding is that uh, sometimes the barrel will interact with uh, the oil on a human hand and that will cause some rusting. So if you're gonna put this in storage, you for sure wanna oil the whole thing down. Similarly, you could put a drop of oil in the barrel to preserve that. So we're gonna wet this down. Take a patch, put three drops. Oil this up a little bit, as well as the magazine tube and the receiver the handle. Put another drop here. Take our clean white shirt and uh, just give it a good polish. It's already looking, looking a lot better. All right. And that, let's see, 
it's working again. Is how you clean and eventually put back together the Henry Classic Rifle. Thanks again. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, let us know what you thought. See you next time on the Gun Guy channel.